Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Manhood Talk Show. My name is Dr. Lewis Jones. Hey, it's DJ Damage, a.k.a. Abdul Kadus. And we are here to talk about complex issues within the black community. Mm -hmm. and specifically for the black men, okay? All black men. Nobody's excluded from the conversation. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to talk about, and we're going to go through these complex issues, you know, weekly. We're going to talk about issues that we struggle with and kind of provide some resources to our people. And without further ado, Abdul, let's get to it. First and foremost, Abdul, I want to thank you for coming on to be my co-host and my producer of the show, Manhood, the talk show. This idea to do a talk show has been dear to my heart for a very long time. As a therapist, I wanted to provide a space for black people, especially black men, to be able to see themselves in the media and be able to talk about the complex topics that we struggle with as men. I also created a digital series called Manhood, where we talk about these complex issues and it's surrounding four black men who navigate through life, working through their issues and sticking together as one unit, you know. Now, and I appreciate you bringing me on. I guess the overall question is, is that show a reality? Do black men stick together? And if not, what can we do to make that full circle unite and attack our goals together? <sighs> really interesting question that you asked. And I will say that what black men need to do to stick together is really see everybody as a black man. And I think what happens in our world is that we focus on the intersections of blackness. Mm -hmm. So we will say, oh, that person, yeah, they black, but they may be gay. Or, oh, they're black, or they may be trans. Or, oh, they black, they may be disabled. And I think that that was a system that was put on us by you know our oppressors to divide our community. But what we have to do is educate ourselves on the topic and also go out into the world and start seeing everybody for who they are. So for me, I don't see the intersections of blackness. I see blackness first. So I see you, I see a black man first. When mm -hmm. I see my trans sisters, I see a black trans woman first. When I see my, my friends who are gay, I see a black gay male first. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is learn to stick together just off the basis of being black. Mm -hmm. And if we stick together off the basis of being black, we can come together as a unit and we could take down any system that's trying to oppress us. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I love what you said. I think even before we get there, we have to see ourselves first, right? So we have to put value in what it means to be black and as a person, because I feel like a lot of this self-hate comes from self-hate, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So you can't have a love for any of the intersections of anything if you look in the mirror and you don't love yourself first, right? Mm -hmm. We have to put more value to who we are as black people. And unfortunately, the world has beaten us down so much we have lost that value in ourselves, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the intersections, whether it's being gay, trans, whatever, you got stuff before that, which is broke mm -hmm. or nerdy or, you know, there's things, there's so many levels yeah. of intersections where we push people away because they're not the stereotypical thing we see as black. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, if you come up in school and you talk proper, you act in white. Now you're not considered black. If you are into anime, which is cool now, but when I was coming up, if he was into some anime, if it wasn't just Dragon Ball Z, you're a weirdo. You're getting beat up. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's a lot of levels of it. And I think we just have to find that value within ourselves mm -hmm. first. And then from that self-healing, then it can spread out into understanding the different intersections. It's interesting that you brought up anime because my older brother loves anime. And we only <laughs> I always tell the story that we only had one TV in the house. So whatever these older people wanted to watch, I had to watch. And I love the Dragon Ball Z. But what was interesting is that... Um, my love was for Beyonce as a kid. Okay. And they always say that at the age of 13, you know, that's when you <laughs> that's when you become a Beyonce fan. And that is so true. That was the, golden that's years. That's the dangerously in love era. And I was sold as if I was in a relationship with a man at 13 in the eighth grade. But um, what was interesting was that um, when we speak about the intersections, I was always, I always felt like I was just in a, in a world by myself. Mm -hmm. And I lived in a bubble. And I, it was just my world and everybody else lived in their world. And because I lived in my world, I suffered from a lot of trauma and a lot of abuse because of that. And it made me distance from the people that I should be uniting with, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't care for my brothers. I didn't care for my sisters, biologically. I didn't care for the people in the neighborhood because I always felt attacked based off who I am. And then it's so interesting because now all of these people are expecting me you know, to help them with their issues. They're dependent on me. And I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are the ones who abuse me. You caused me all this trauma. And now I'm supposed to just get out of my bed and go and help you. 
And then the thing about it is that I have no choice mm -hmm. because if I don't get up and go stand up for black people, then I'm going to be called the coon and I'm going to be called the, the person exactly. who's not non-black and all this other stuff. And so for me, I think the bigger thing is what we have to really focus on is like, when I show up for you all, when stuff happens to you, you all have to make sure that you show up for us, the other intersections, you know, because a lot of times, like, we don't have a choice, you know, and I think that other people, they get to say, well, that happened to a gay person, so that ain't got nothing to do with me, or that person was trans, so that ain't got nothing to do with me, and the thing about it is that it does, because what the people in the world, what they see is black. So if they go out, if we go out and something happens to us, it's not mainly because we gay or because we trans or anything else. It could just be off the basis of us being black. So when you allow it to happen to one of us who's black, you're also setting the precedent for it to happen to you. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's important for everybody to just stand up for everybody. And you know, even though it's not your fight, it is your fight. Because when you allow something to happen to one group of people, it can definitely happen to you. Yeah, I think what it what it is in America, and especially in our culture, black culture specifically, there's not a lot of camaraderie, right? Mm -hmm. So in the regular environment, yes, people that are gay or trans, they're kind of pushed to the to the outside. They're different. But I came up in a boarding school, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a building where it's a hundred boys, right? A floor, mm -hmm. forty boys. I'm sharing a room, bunk beds, wardrobes, seven boys to a room, right? So in our world. It didn't matter what you were, what you did, we're brothers. Because mm -hmm. when we leave these walls of this boarding school, say we go on a field trip, if anybody mess with anybody, we had that group think mentality. However, everybody on the outside was like, oh, it's weird that you you cool with the, the nerd guy. Oh, it's <laughs> weird that, oh, you got a gay homie. Why are you saying what's up to him? It's like, that's my brother. It don't matter what he does personally. That's my brother. That's somebody I live with. That's somebody I eat with. And I feel like in our society, they're so easy to make people individuals. I think that's been the, the biggest thing that's hurt our community is everybody is individual thinking or this attracting to groups that they think benefit them. And it's really important to really, especially as men, to really feel that, that, that brotherhood and that bond regardless of the differences in your personal life. Like me, I, I could care less about what somebody doing in their personal life. You're a black person, you're a human, and you have a good intention for life, so therefore you're gonna be my brother. So when I see things happen to any black person, for me personally, I don't see it that way. But I'm not naive to know that other people don't look at it that way, where they can go, oh, that's a gay dude. I'm like, that's still a black dude, bro. It don't matter. And I feel like what we need to do as far as uniting things is we need to have more of more camaraderie. We need to build more brotherhood. And I don't know if that starts from programs. Mm -hmm. And it honestly might just start from just more male leadership in neighborhoods, mm -hmm. where people are just used to different people with a, the same objective coming together for a goal. And I think that's really like one of the biggest things we could do to help uh, bridge the gap. You know what, Abdul, I'll say this. I feel like you are a unicorn. <laughs> and let me tread lightly, because you know how they doing with the, you know, with the mermaid. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but you're definitely a unicorn. And the thing about it is that like, I can appreciate your thought process because you see people for who they are, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that I just wish that we can take that same thought process and generalize it amongst all black men and all people in the world. That is the one fight that we constantly fight with white people. We want white people to accept us for who we are. We want white people to see us as people, mm -hmm. but then we go out into the world and we try to, we oppress a whole group of people, you know, we take those same principles and we apply it to this whole population. And then we get upset when they fight back. We get upset when they fight back. So I want our community, especially black people, especially black men to start leading and to start seeing their brothers and sisters as a, a, an extension of them and really stand up for each other. Because if we don't stand up for each other, we ain't gonna have nothing. And we gonna always be on the back end. We gonna always be at the bottom of the totem pole. It's because we don't stand with each other. You know, truthfully, a lot of black people uphold the system of white oppression. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is release ourselves from the shackles of white supremacy, and we have to learn to stick together as one. And for anybody who may be struggling with this topic or in need of mental health services, we have resources at the bottom of this screen. Please take the time and reach out, and we thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tune in next week and we're talking about the challenges of being vulnerable as a black man.
side. I'm a killer, well, you kind. Black, black, black is gold, black is black, 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 black is light, black, black, black is gold, black is night, black, black, black is love, black is light.